Good morning, guys. As you can see, I am hanging out downstairs in our homeschool room because just last week we finished up our homeschool assessments. So now that we have all of that done, it marks the official end of our school year and it is time to start clearing out curriculum, getting rid of the old to make way for the new. I have a lot of new things that I have purchased to start using in, I don't know, maybe about August or September. And so I want to clear out some of this and add in the new curriculum. I thought that this would be the perfect opportunity to kind of just do a quick end of year homeschool wrap up for you guys where I can kind of go through one subject at a time and tell you what worked, what didn't, what we loved, maybe what didn't work so well. Uh, just kind of give you guys an overview of how our homeschool year went. As I am working on all of this, my kids are kind of scattered in some different places throughout our house. Leah currently has the little ones outside playing with some kinetic sand. And then Noah and Mariah are both working on their classes from Artistic Pursuits. And so this gives me a good bit of time to kind of tackle this project. Okay, so for this first video, it's going to be a combo video or a two for one. I'm going to talk about what worked and what didn't for seventh and eighth grade. And I'm putting the two of these together because as you guys probably know, if you've been around my channel, my two oldest kids, my 13 and 14 year old, they do the bulk of their school together. And so I combine as many subjects as possible with the two of them. So I'm just gonna go through subject by subject and we'll just talk through some of their curriculum. Okay, so the way I figured I'd handle this is to just bring you guys right down on the floor with me as I am going through each one of these cabinets down here. I tend to organize these by subject, so let's start with math. If you've been around our channel for a while, you guys know that we love Math You See. We have been using it from the very beginning, and so Noah and Leah both completed pre-algebra this year. I, I can't say anything bad about this curriculum. It is wonderful, definitely challenging, definitely a step up from the other levels that they have used in the past. Now, advice that I would have about this level, about math, you see higher levels of math. First of all, take your time. Remember that math, you see is a mastery course. Your kids should not be moving on from one lesson to the next until they have completely mastered the concept. To go along with that, I would also encourage you, this is the time to go ahead and start letting your child use a calculator. I picked up some just, you know, regular scientific calculators, not very expensive, I think around $30 for each of my kids. And I let them use calculators on most lessons because there are some, some really big, beefy problems in here. So calculators will definitely save them some time. I would also encourage you as the teacher, as mama, as the parent, this is a great opportunity in seventh or eighth grade to start practicing your grading routine for high school. When you get into high school, you're gonna have to start keeping track of grades for transcripts and things like that. So start working on that little by little as your kids are going through pre-algebra. It will give you kind of a less pressured time frame to get used to a grading system. And if you find that something isn't working, you can change it without the pressure of high school on your back. All right, so this next cabinet is my language or language arts cabinet. It's probably getting a little bit too full. I think I'm trying to jam pack too much curriculum in here. So I'm either gonna need to let some things go or maybe put this into a couple different cabinets and split it up, we'll just see. But for today, let's go ahead and talk through what Noah and Leah finished for language arts this year. Uh, I'll grab this to start with. This is their analytical grammar DVD set. There's also some workbooks in here. I just recently devoted an entire video to analytical grammar. I'll make sure to link it down below. Um, a full review of how it's been going and what we think of the program. In short, we love it. It's very challenging, very thorough. So Noah and Leah got through season one this year. 
we are planning on finishing up seasons two and three for next year. All right, next up is spelling. Sorry, I'm just noticing how red and shiny my shoulders are. We've been staining the deck this week, so forgive that. But uh, spelling you see, you guys know I've done reviews about this curriculum before. We absolutely love this program. Noah and Leah are both getting really close to finishing out all of the different levels. So Noah finished up E this year, Leah finished up F. Some advice I would give you if you're using any of these upper levels of spelling you see is don't be afraid to get a lot of bang for your buck with this curriculum. You can really beef it up and do some extras with it. So if you're familiar with this curriculum, there is a weekly passage that your kids will be reading through, doing chunking and copy work from, and then doing two separate dictations from. Something I did with my kids is we just went down to one weekly dictation every week, just with the amount of kids I am homeschooling, I didn't always have time to do two weekly dictations with them. Instead, on one of those dictation days, I would have them do copy work or typing. So sometimes I would have them do the entire passage in print. Sometimes I would have them write it out in cursive, or you could also have them take it to the computer and let them type it out for typing practice. And so this was a really great way to just kind of take this curriculum a step further. And then the last vein of language is IEW, Institute for Excellence in Writing. Again, this is a curriculum that we have been using for several years now. This year, Noah and Leah did year one, level B of the Structure and Style for Students series. This came along with DVD lessons that were taught by Andrew Poodwall. They, they're hilarious, they're so helpful, so informative. Uh, we, we absolutely love this writing program. Now, that being said, I will say it is the part of our homeschool that takes up the largest chunk of time. The kids can easily spend 45 minutes to an hour just in this subject every single day. They really, really enjoy it. Their writing has made so much progress. They've done so well, but just, just be aware this is a little bit of a beefy subject and it will take a good chunk of your day. Now, if y'all have followed my channel for any length of time, you guys know that I love IEW. I am going to go ahead and link my favorites page down below. This is just my personal page on IEW's website where I have all of my personal picks and favorites that we use in our homeschool from IEW. So feel free to check that link out and you can see all of the products that we love from IEW. Welcome to my little science and history corner back here in the back of my cabinet area. The first thing I'll do is talk about history. Noah and Leah both did the U.S. History Detectives Book 1 this year for their history or social studies. This is a curriculum that I somewhat picked out of necessity because of some circumstances that were going on in our life this fall, moving and some other things. I really needed some of their subjects to be completely independent. I needed Noah and Leah to be able to pick up history open and go without any instruction from me or any help. And so this, this curriculum definitely fit the bill for that. They were able to do this completely on their own. They would spend anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes working through this workbook every day. I should mention that this is an all-in-one book. So this is your child's textbook as well as their workbook. And so that is one of the reasons why I went ahead and had it cut and spiral bound. I thought it would be helpful for them to be able to lie this flat down on the counter as they were writing in it. And, and that was definitely worth the $5 of, of getting that done. That being said, this curriculum is not a win for us this year. The content of it is great. It is very challenging. It is meant for grades 8 through 12. So the amount of U.S. history that is being presented to your child is fantastic. It's such good information. 
However, the format of this got very, very boring for my kids. Almost every single lesson and chapter, it, it's exactly the same. You read a chapter, you answer some multiple choice questions, you do a written response. Read a chapter, multiple choice questions, written response. And, and after about a month or so of that, my kids just were tired of the format. I think that this curriculum would be really great if it was beefed up with some read alouds or extra books, maybe like a Johnny Tremaine or some other type of fiction or novel books to go along with it just to kind of help bring the material to life a little bit. In hindsight, I wish I would have been able to add on some hands-on projects or activities to go along with what they were learning. But for this year, in the survival mode that we were in, this definitely worked well for them. They, they were just bored. All right, and then for science, Noah and Leah both completed God's Design for the Physical World. I originally purchased this years ago from Answers in Genesis. I think it may be done by Master Books now. But they covered three different textbooks, Inventions and Technology, Machines and Motion, and Heat and Energy. Now this curriculum is meant for late elementary school through middle school. I think it is for third through eighth grade. And I think because of this, this is why this curriculum did not work very well for us this year. It was great at presenting very basic science concepts, giving you a really good introduction, but it didn't really dive very deep, especially for a seventh and an eighth grader. I found myself having to add on some activities, some experiments and things like that to really kind of bring it up to their age level. We also just use this as an opportunity to really work on good note taking. Um, that was a skill I really tried to hone in on as we were doing this curriculum. So I would have them read each chapter, take really good notes, highlight, and then I would go through and check their notes to make sure that they were really doing a good job grasping the most important information. And so if anything, it, it was a great introduction for some science concepts for them, but really it was more a great opportunity to work on note taking as a preparation for high school. Speaking of science and history, this is a good segue to talk about Gather Round. Now, you guys probably know we did not end up doing nearly the amount of Gather Round unit studies that I had intended to do this past school year. But one of the ones that we did that were, was just amazing, we absolutely loved, was the Inventions and Idea Unit. We paired this alongside of that Answers in Genesis um, Inventions book, and, and it went great. We also did the Christmas Mini Unit for the Christmas Around the World. That was just a really great time to focus on geography and introduction to cultures and holidays. We, we loved both of those units from Gather Round this year. And even though my plans for Gather Round didn't go the way I intended, I, I think that I learned even more why I love this curriculum. It is so flexible. It can be used as a supplement. It can be used as your core. It can be, you know, taken down a notch and only done the bare minimum, or you can really beef it up and add a lot to it and, and make it a huge part of your homeschool. I love this because you can make Gather Round work for you. So even though we didn't get to use Gather Round the way I wanted to this year, it still really worked for us in this season of life. So if you watched any of my curriculum pick videos, you guys know that we are going to continue using Gather Round next school year. It's going to look a little bit differently than it has in the past and I'm so excited about it.
right, and then last but not least for Bible, I actually have to take you guys over here to our Bible shelf. As I've said on here oftentimes before, Bible is not something I consider to be a part of our homeschool. It's part of our family culture, a part of our day in and day out. We would do it whether or not we did homeschool or not. But I do like to include it in these videos for you guys. So Noah and Leah both worked through several studies. Sorry, they're still in the plastic. It's a little noisy. Uh, but several of these not consumed youth studies, these were absolutely wonderful. They both did, I think maybe four or five this past school year and they did them independently it took them maybe 20 to 30 minutes every morning and they got a lot out of them I, I bought the entire pack last year on sale for them and they just kind of split them up I'm doing the same get thing again next school year these were just a really great Bible study for them to do and to work through on their own. If you are looking for something for your younger teens to do, I, I would definitely encourage you to check out these studies. Okay guys, well I'm about two thirds of the way done going through all of the curriculum. I have one more kiddo to go, but I'm going to pause here. I'm going to finish guzzling the rest of that iced coffee, head upstairs and make the kids some lunch, maybe stick them in front of some television for a little bit and then come back down here and tackle all of my second grade work for Mariah. So be sure to stay tuned and come back for my next video where I will be doing a curriculum wrap up for her. A note of encouragement here for some of you mamas out there. She just completed all of her second grade work and she had a really, really good year. I just, I had to put it down and say, we'll try it again next year. The other thing I wanted to show you guys real quick, 